will pass through the doors of 10 Downing Street to become the next UK Prime Minister. You may be interested to learn that I've actually passed through those doors myself. Not, you'll be greatly relieved to know, to become a potential Prime Minister. But that's another story. A door is a simple idea. It allows you to pass from one space to another. But if it's locked or barred, it can stop your passage. A door may be open to all or only a few. Those are the key and no one else. Of the four Gospels, Luke is the one who mentions doors most frequently. He uses them as a symbol. A door can point to the entrance to the fullness of life God offers. The door to the kingdom of God. Today is one of those Sundays when different churches read different Gospels, but both alternatives come from chapter 13 of Luke. So let's look at that chapter as a whole. For those who read verses 22 to 30, we'll hear the invitation of Jesus, strive to enter by the narrow door. A narrow door is difficult to get through, it's a squeeze. If you're carrying too much weight or too many possessions, you have a problem. Jesus' answer follows an inquiry about whether salvation is limited to an elite. On his way to Jerusalem, he is asked, Sir, will only a few be saved? At first, Jesus' answer seems to agree with this. Strive to be among the chosen few who will squeeze in while the majority are excluded. Most sermons seem to agree with this. The preacher, rather smugly to my mind, assumes that they are one of the chosen few and then warn the rest of us that we are on the wide and easy road to destruction. Yet... Is it that simple? Other churches today will read the verses earlier where Luke tells the story of a badly disabled woman. We are told she is bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. This poor woman hobbles into the synagogue. Are the doors open to her? Or will she feel shut out and unregarded? Jesus is preaching, but when he sees her, he stops and calls her over. Laying hands on her, he speaks those words. Woman, you are set free from your disability. Luke tells us she immediately stood up straight and unsurprisingly begins to praise God. Jesus has flung open wide the gates of God's healing. She is not to be locked out from the fullness of life that God gives. However, he can't please everybody. The president of the synagogue is indignant. You can imagine the scene. Suddenly, everyone with an illness is pushing at the door, demanding to be healed by this visiting rabbi. It's chaos! The peace of the service is shattered. To be fair to the synagogue leader, he is not against healing, but everything in its proper place. He wants the Sabbath to be reserved for rest and worship. He sternly addresses the crowd. There are six days in the week when work may be done. Come and be healed on one of those days. However, Jesus wasn't, doesn't want the doors of God's healing to be narrowed down even by one day. Sure, the Sabbath is special, but he reminds that official that they all take a relaxed, common-sense approach to the law. He asks, On the Sabbath, who does not untie his ox and take it for watering? You don't keep an animal locked away in a shed, especially on a hot day. You untie it. You lead it through the barn doors. You take it to its trough 
and allow it to drink. If an ox can be refreshed on the Sabbath, how much more can this daughter of Abraham receive God's full refreshment? The synagogue is right behind Jesus and cheered him on. Yeah! Back to the narrow door. If you read on, Jesus is actually attacking that smug elite who assume that they have the automatic right of entry to God's feast. Lord, open to us. You know us. You talked in our streets. We have eaten together. You're one of us. Yet it's this religious elite who may find themselves locked out. It's not the few special insiders who are allowed in, but the many. The people from east and west, north and south, will come in, says Jesus. Yes, the great founder, founders of the faith will be there, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets. However, those who, being, those who boast of being descended from those illustrious ancestors are locked out. Small wonder they'll be grinding at teeth in frustration. Perhaps we're being faced with one of Jesus' paradoxes. The measure you give is the measure you'll receive. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. If we narrow the entrance to God's kingdom, we may find that we are the ones who can't squeeze in. Alternatively, if we open wide the doors of God's mercy, we may be pleased to find the feast of God's kingdom is also open to us. Strive to enter the narrow door by opening it wide to others. For the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Amen.